What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and it's been a minute since we've um, had some of our birthright uh, realm or faction or domain reviews so we're kind of re-launching, uh, re-getting back into our series here. We kind of stopped a little while ago uh, with the Heartlands and we're going to finish that up here for you guys so if you have uh, if you haven't been by in a while, um, uh, it's, been a, it's been a good couple months since we've had a chance to actually get into and cover some things for Birthright. So um, now that some of the things in our schedule have cleared up, we're going to um, keep plugging away at the domains here. So as I said, we kind of got into the Heartlands a little bit. We still have plenty of domains to go. So today we're going to show you guys Tornin. And um, just to kind of preface that here, so uh, when we talk about some of the things here, if you look at where Tornin is located, it's kind of in an unenviable spot. You have the two powerhouses, Avenil and Boreen, uh, on either side there. You have your um, uh, really uh, major enemy here, Alamie, to your eastern border, which uh, basically in the background story for this, Torn and kind of split off from this larger realm about 100 years ago, so they are always scheming to try and um, ruin your day, basically, and uh, reclaim lost territory. You got all the shenanigans and schemes and stuff of Endier and the Gilder uh, that runs that uh, realm there. You're not too far away from the militant domain of Gore, and if things weren't worse enough, you have uh, a border in a couple of your um, territories here with Rove Manslayer, um, who's basically just everybody's enemy. Um, and that kind of keeps uh, Avenel and Borrowing at least partially occupied. And then you do have a sliver uh, here in your northeastern province that also borders on the Five Peaks. So um, lots of things going on in your realm. Lots of things to worry about here. That being said, it's definitely a fun one. And uh, if you're up to the challenge, uh, it can be a great realm to rule into a uh, formidable um, power in its own right. It is uh, considered neutral, at least at the outset, and recommended means you can take it. It does start off with eight provinces, so you got plenty of physical territory. It's just you have a lot of uh, pressing issues um, within and uh, from uh, outside as well. So uh, a decent spread here, although most of them tend to be on the lower developed side. Um, you do have um, your capital area, basically uh, Hazrian, at a five, um, and then lots of lower level ones again. The Your twos, though, um, do have a lot of magical potential there. Um, and then the smaller ones, the threes, um, and a couple of the, or one of the other twos, um, are basically at the lower level of magical potential, but basically all your sources are tapped out here. So on the political side, um, you own some of the law in your land, but basically Borrowing and Avenel have taken an interest there as well. So you have a uphill battle on sort of really getting full control of your realm. The temple side is kind of split between two specific temples, um, at least on the surface, they get along, but um, that's not always the case. But you have some opportunities there. The guild side is also fairly messy. You have lots of actors in that area. And then the domains, or sorry, the sources are split between Kane, um, who is not necessarily a friendly mage, but not necessarily an enemy either, and Row of Manslayer, um, and extricating him from your magical potential here in your territory will be um, uh, difficult and dangerous, to say the least. So. On the law side here, if you do choose to run with the regent um, that uh, in the story, uh, or the story as is, um, is currently ruling, that's uh, Layla Flaherty's. She's the Duchess of Tordon, um, owns about a third of the kingdom's law, so and that's already kind of um, setting the stage for basically uh, just the amount of work you have to do to sort of take more control of your kingdom, but you got to do it carefully. So the rest is split between Borrowing and Avenel, or goes unclaimed. So there is a little bit unclaimed right now, and that's, I think, where you sh um, would do well to start and start uh, sort of gaining a little bit more control over those areas before you work on reducing either of their influences. And really, uh, it's going to take a slow and balanced buildup of your potential uh, to not have either of those two powerhouses kind of step in the yeah. Um, you certainly don't want to offend both, um, and really um, can't really afford to necessarily ally with one or the other, um, at least not immediately, because that will earn you the enmity of the other one. So, on the temple side, we have uh, the Western Imperial Temple of Halen and the Militant Order of Kurakin. Um, so they've split the religion basically kind of right down the seam, with the at least uh, tacit or public agreement that neither will seek to wrest away 
The other's holdings, of course, neither side has any intention of keeping that, and that's uh, if, you know, depending on what your DM has got planned for you in the campaign, um, that's going to be another area where there's going to be some challenges that might boil over into surface level conflicts, but I think with some skillful ruling you can um, put their uh, fervor between the two military, or not between, well, between the two religions, but also their military arms to better use, so as in protecting the realm from the Five Peaks, maybe even launching a crusade into there, maybe getting some territory that way. Um, and then also uh, sort of guarding against Rove as well. Um, and certainly you have a lot of work to do on your eastern border with LMEA, so um, if you can sort of get the religions behind um, protecting the realm that way, that can also make up for the lack of uh, powerful army that you have. But you don't want to let them get out of control either. Uh, the guild side is again messy. So we have uh, Meli uh, Barian of Cariel um, and Parnian and Nubier, uh, Inier, a hell of a name, of Avenel seek to dethrone the Duchess of Tornan from her holding in Hazrian. Um, so that's one that really you can't uh, afford to lose. However, they first plan to rest away the more threatening holdings of Arian, Mirlin, Duchess of Brosengay. That one um, you might be able to play off to your advantage there. Um, now, you want to be careful with Avenel getting too much influence, and nom nominally Brosengay is under his thumb, but um, we all know uh, from previous reviews that that's going to be a little bit trickier. Uh, now, uh, keeping Cariel's influence out will be kind of key, too. You do have um, some physical distance between you, um, several realms, and also the Five Peaks. So I feel like um, finding, either building up a state uh, guild network of your own, or um, finding just a way to keep them occupied against each other uh, will be key, but um, certainly um, not losing any control that you have right now would be uh, useful. On the source side, again, Kane of Endier has claimed nearly all the magic here. Um, in return, she only asks for occasional help, but barely gets it. Um, and then uh, really uh, help against uh, Rove because he owns a little bit of sources in here. And um, while he's not necessarily like an existential threat in the sense of having sizable enough armies to really raid, uh, or take over any uh, human realm. That being said, um, definitely got the magical skills and uh, individually to launch smaller raids and skirmishes and even assassinate key people in your realm. So um, you got to be careful there. I suppose if you wanted to be uh, dipping a little bit more towards the evil side, you might somehow um, get in contact with Rehoof and try and eliminate some of your other. Uh, uh, enemies here, maybe on like the guild side or something like that, but that's uh, that's a whole other um, line of thought there. Um, and again, Kane really doesn't provide much, but finding a way to maybe get him to help you a little bit more would be uh, worthwhile, or um, cultivating some sort of wizard uh, or lieutenant of your own uh, could be worthwhile. Um, on the economy side, um, it's not the greatest situation. You've gen you, uh, you've generated thirty eight regency. Um, uh, accumulated 21 minuscule treasury of eight so again you have lots of issues lots of things that you need to get under control fortunately it seems like your people more or less like you um so again i think first steps are getting more control of the law and then figuring out what to do on the temple and guild side um and trying to earn a little bit more income that way uh currently you have a minuscule army to start with and they're really just for defensive purposes because again your your main goal has been to try and stay as neutral as possible at least so far um so you have two units of archers three pikes and two units of knights and again a lot of that goes to basically defending um and keyword defending not um like any aspirations of offense here against rove and the five peaks although Again, I feel like getting the people uh, rule, ruling up your couple of your provinces and um, increasing your law and then kind of um, developing the frontier a little bit more towards the Five Peaks and then maybe even launching some attacks into there. Maybe even claiming a province. That could be a good goal to sort of, again, put the energies of some of the faiths and stuff to. Your character here, so Layla Flaherty's um, pretty good bloodline there. Um, she's neutral good herself. Um, she inherited the kingdom from a senile father and strives to rebuild it to its former glory or at least keep it from those who are basically greedily um, or desperately seeking the Iron Throne. So with three provinces bordering Borrowine and three on Avenel, basically, yeah, you, you got to be extremely careful with your politics. Um, so and I think that's something that will be keen for the DM to, to work on is sort of 
providing you with a steady stream of tension between lots of different um, things on the, again, political, religious, uh, economic sides, and even the, the magical sides here, um, to really, until you can blossom into a, a more prosperous and powerful kingdom, you um, you should be uh, having a pretty uphill battle here. You do have a current lieutenant um, who's actually an elf commander, so um, there could be some uh, curveballs thrown your way there from the DM, uh, making him kind of suspect. Um, as to his loyalties, um, but anyway, um, so he's level seven chaotic good, um, holds, holds the defense of Northern Tornin, uh, but he would love to actually go after Rove, so he's actually an elf, um, that, uh, uh, is fine with being in, a, in a human realm here, um, so it's a little bit, uh, conspicuous too, but, um, basically, as far as the story goes so far, uh, the Duchess has forbidden it, basically, because, um, even though he's a level 7, which is pretty decent, uh, Rove would just, you know, eat him for lunch um, and add to his uh, powers, even though, um, again, he's got a decent bloodline here and all that, uh, this lieutenant, but, um, yeah, not really uh, a challenge for Rove here. be basically a speed bump. Um, but, again, finding some way to um, give this uh, commander, if he's capable, um, some more uh, things to do, like, again, Maybe a little bit steering a little bit away from Rove, but um, trying to find a way to deal with the Five Peaks territory and maybe working with some of the nearby realms to sort of reduce um, that threat uh, maybe once and for all, or at least partially. Um, that could be a worthwhile endeavor. So important NPCs. Again, you got um, lots to deal with here, and uh, the DM, again, should be uh, not quite making your life hell, but certainly difficult here. So an Alamian agent has set up shop in the court um, Bob, the court tour maker, or Baub, um, uh, creates playthings for children, uh, of Tornin's nobles, but he's basically, um, just an evil little bastard here, developing spring-loaded poison needles that can shoot out from dolls and toy swords to kill the children, which would basically leave your court decimated of your nobility and likely effective leaders and things like that, and other important people. So if luck sides with the Duke of Alamier, the nobles might be too grieved to respond, and then that's when they would launch an invasion. So, um, and it's, it's a bit of a question mark to see what other nearby realms would do, um, if they would even come to your aid, or if they would kind of just try to circle like vultures and kind of try and pick up some of the pieces. Um, so you got that to deal with, um, and um, that could be part of a various adventure hooks that your DM might start um, uh weaving into uh, your campaign there. So if you don't have enough to deal with, you might start having to deal with uh, the deaths of uh, kids of a lot of your more important nobles. Um, the description of the realm itself, so again, we've kind of mentioned that it's um, was formerly part of Alamier, and which was, uh, if you kind of combine the two, then it would have been definitely a huge realm. But torn and split off during a civil war uh, between two brothers, both claiming to be the rightful heir of Alamier, but both unwilling to step aside. So basically... Um, it, uh, just resulted in that schism and split in the kingdom there. So, um, and that was roughly a hundred years ago. Um, and still, uh, as in the heartlands, places in the countryside remain where no living thing will grow again. The prairie in the south slowly gives way to the hills of the western provinces, which in turn become mountains, forest, or a little of both. But those who would travel here through the, uh, El... Elevs, uh, that's a tough one, Elevsnemir, or Peshelen, um, should take care for Rove's domain lies nearby, and human-hating elves sometimes creep from Rove into Tornin to slay those, uh, quote, despoilers of the land. So, um, again, definitely uh, an issue there with your frontier territories, and um, certainly working to keep your people as safe as you can should always be um, a good uh, thing to work on and we'll keep the people on your side, hopefully. The inhabitants seem generally friendly, but speak and act rather guardedly. Um, they derive from the same stock as the Alamians, but the rift of the last centuries caused them basically to drift apart culturally uh, as, much as, uh, as much as politically. Um, the tours get somewhat defensive when confronted with the topic of the rebellion, but they also feel proud of their forefathers' defiance. So this pride uh, drives them to prove themselves better than their neighbors and try to excel in everything they do. Um, so even though they fall short sometimes, basically no one can deny their efforts. Um, and, uh, that again, kind of sometimes makes them too proud. And that's kind of a special condition here. So whether you're adventuring in here and uh, maybe not running the, uh, 
the, the game as like running a realm or anything, but definitely something for DM to take note of. So basically, um, if you're not from here, um, something that um, could be used uh, uh, when uh, role playing uh, in here as well. Uh, the capital um, sits just across the Tour River from Alamis, uh, Alamies capital, which, um, you know, that's uh, going to be a constant reminder on both sides um, that they split apart um, and pretty rough there. So um, Hayes and Lofton were once one city. However, after the Civil War that rent the land, the city split in two. And Tornan's Hayes now dominate, dominates the river's traffic, keeping the bulk of the bounty away from Lofton, which is going to be a constant uh, irritant for the Alamians. Um, the walled city has kept out of several, uh, kept out several Alamian uh, invasions and bears permanent scars as proof. The Haitians, um, in particular, and Tours in general, look at those scars and remember the necessity of freedom from Alamian rule. Um, and that ultimately could be at some point a potential end goal, depending on how powerful you get and, you know, how well you do. Um, you might push things, uh, further and try to really, um, degrade and, um, kind of take the offensive against the Alamians at some point and um, sort of reunite the realm, but uh, sort of under tour control. But that, uh, again, would be kind of almost maybe a late late stage goal and potential goal for you if, if you're not necessarily planning on somehow getting to the Iron Throne. Um, trade goods. Uh, the tour river flows past the, uh, the door of Hayes. Merging into the Maisel just north of Endier. So um, the river, um, Tornan's main trade route, makes Hayes basically a veritable seaport. So from the northern hills and mountains and the western forest, um, all these kind of goods flow through and flow in that direction. So um, things like lumber, furniture, gold, silver, and coal um, that basically other areas of the former uh, Anawir desperately need. Um, and something that really could be a goal and a focus for you in building up your economy and uh, that of course will involve somehow again getting a hold of the guild situation um though no imperial capital haste remains one of the heartland's main cities bringing traders and visitors from all over to buy trade and see the sites so something again that could also be ruled up even further and really just adding to the glory and splendor of your capital there but again gotta get your economy going too allies and enemies you don't really have any major ones um on either side except for the alamians would be your enemy um Tornan has gone to great lengths to avoid choosing allies that would anger uh another nearby province so your um your current ruler's um, efforts to remain neutral basically you've gotten some praise from the moor and the patriarch of elenie but um wouldn't necessarily go so far as them being true allies of yours and they're also somewhat distant um the moors got enough things to deal with and elenie is also very far away and ultimately not all that powerful either um even avidil and boroween have not declared their allegiance one way or another which can come as a relief to the duchess so yeah you know if one decided to basically take over you the other would step in and then basically your country would be the middle ground there or the battleground <clears throat> enemies though so you really don't have any major enemies um no one's necessarily out to get you except again the alamians and specifically the duke there um so however basically by and large your your policies uh, so far have made it so that no one's really out to get your territory uh, again except alamier um and you know yeah they've carried that hatred basically for a century here so um he's always hatching all kinds of schemes and again we see a pretty dastardly one here with the uh, the poisoned uh the guy making poison toys basically um so and that one if you know properly role played and um uncovered and things like that you know that could be a sort of a nice causes belly um to uh, at some point then um take the fight to alamier or at least uh shame them um on the political stage to the point where um you can maybe cultivate some actual allies out of that um and as we'll see when we do review alamier you know um it's not like they are necessarily beloved um uh, in general so um it wouldn't take too much bad press to sort of um get them shunned uh, further and potentially have other consequences too um, and then finally, again, that special conditions, again, we just mentioned, you know, uh, tour pride. So again, uh, DM should emphasize that they're, you know, very prideful on all subjects, their country and things like that, almost to the point of, uh, you know, being a little bit too boastful. So um, quick review there, guys. Um, I know we uh, uh, talked about a fair bit here. So again, lots of challenges, a really interesting realm. You're sandwiched between all kinds of different things. You got um, major human power players. You got um, a f the territory that you're formerly a part of. 
always scheming to basically um, launch attacks uh, on different levels of you. You got internal issues with uh, the law, the temples, the guilds, sources. You you have any number of challenges. You need a uh, need to kickstart your economy. Um, you need to potentially cultivate allies, but very carefully. Um, so you might look further abroad. Uh, develop some trade routes there or something. Um, again, there's opportunity to maybe get attacks into the Five Peaks if you want to expand your territory without necessarily engaging in war with another human realm. But to do that, again, you got to build the economy up, um, work on your army. But you don't want to rise so rapidly that you start making or becoming a threat or being viewed as a threat by Borrowing or Avenel. Um, but you should have a little bit of room to grow. The DM shouldn't, like, you know, slap you down, uh, I think, you know, for trying to grow your territory and your, your army a little bit here. Um, even, you know, this is what, uh, five, six, seven units here. Um, likely more if you could raise some units out of the churches here. Um, Borrowing and Avenel are, are so massive, they really shouldn't um, worry about, you know, you adding a few units. But, um, you know, if you do get pretty large and have like, you know, 15, 20, 30 units or something like that, obviously they're going to take notice. So lots of different things to consider here. But, um, you know, one of those realms where it's really... Um, you can actually take pride um, in accomplishing something here uh, if you if you uh, tread carefully and really build up Torn. And so a, a fun one to play for sure. Um, let us know your thoughts, guys, in the comments. Um, have you played Torn and um, adventured in there? Um, let us know uh, your experiences uh, with that in Birthright. So um, again, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. Leave us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. we got plenty more Birthright content coming for you guys now. Um, so the next up will be, I believe, Alamie. So we will um, focus on uh, the opposite side of the coin here to Tornan in our next video and keep on wrapping up things in the Heartlands. Uh, and then we still have plenty more to cover for you guys. But um, we'll have regular Birthright coverage for you um, moving forward again. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.